Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Pitbull, titled Globalization. You know, I'm a little surprised I haven't done a full-length review of any of Pitbull's albums, or really given an opinion on them besides just being in passing. Let's change some of that, shall we? So, okay. Pitbull. Miami-based rapper started off in the southern crunk scene in the mid-2000s, but he really hit it big during the club boom of the late 2000s, able to transition some of his limited wordplay with just enough charisma to take on the role of the club VIP. And for a while, Pitbull's continued success was mystifying to me, because not only was he racking up a respectable number of hits, he was also simultaneously restarting the mainstream careers of Latin stars like Enrique Iglesias, Jennifer Lopez, and even Mark Anthony. And that's not counting the hits that he got with with T-Pain, Chris Brown, Christina Aguilera, Usher, Neo, and Kesha, the list goes on here. Pitbull was like the game of pop and EDM flavored hip hop. The majority of his hits were on collaborations, and yet his lyrical content was so thin and interchangeable between track to track that it was baffling that he had managed to stick around as long as he had, even despite the complete implosion of the club boom in recent years. Well. See, here's the funny thing. I've actually been to a Pitbull live show when he was on tour with Kesha. Surprise, surprise, he's actually pretty damn good live despite the majority of his collaborators not being with him. And I noticed something about his audience. They were usually older in their 30s and 40s or European. And then his chart longevity started making a little bit more sense to me. Like, I mean, say what you will about Pitbull, but he does have real charisma and a unique presence. And since he's so thoroughly entrenched in his own lane and is thoroughly bilingual with Spanish, and one of his most distinctive lyrical traits is his love of travel, it kind of makes sense that he would attract some of that sort of audience, who likely wouldn't be as fickle as a younger, more trend-following fan base. So, okay, I guess I get why Pitbull stuck around, but does this make his material any good? Well, for me, he's kind of hit and miss, as he really doesn't compose album statements beyond heaps of very radio-friendly singles. So, with all that in mind, I figured it could be interesting to check out his newest record titled Globalization. What do we get here? Well, Honestly, something pretty enjoyable. And speaking as a guy who has placed Pitbull on multiple lists containing worst songs of the year, this is a little bit unnerving and only a little bit humiliating. But you know what? I'm always honest in some of these reviews, and yeah, I'll admit it. I enjoyed chunks of globalization by Pitbull a fair deal. Now, let me stress here that there are still major flaws with this record that are pretty damn hard to overlook, and if you haven't bought into what Pitbull is selling before, you're definitely not going to be on board for this one. But there are definitely some enjoyable songs on this album, even if the many, many directions that this record takes makes it feel a little bit more thin and messy at some points, I gotta be honest there. So you know what, let's start with the instrumentation and the production. And I'll say this for Pitbull, he's got a knack for some pretty decent melodic hooks that do have a certain amount of Caribbean inspired flavor. He's at his best rigging with loose, lightweight, upbeat party vibes that allow him to relax and just bring together a ton of energy. What's important to note here is that Pitbull is not trying to play the boss or a hardcore gangster rapper by any stretch, and he knows it. Instead he just wants everyone to get up to drink and dance so he can meet up with a hot girl and take her around the world for a night. And his songs work best when they stick to that admittedly simplistic club dancing principle. Chris Brown sounds better than he has all year on fun with a loose disco inspired pan flute groove. Fireball brings in Spanish guitar, hand claps, and cowbell to supplement John Ryan. The jazzy horns on Celebrate were pretty good. The guitars and lightweight whistles on Sexy Beaches that complement Chloe Angelides pretty damn effectively. And well, the pseudo reggae vibe of day drinking worked pretty well too. Probably the best pure melody on this album comes courtesy of Wild Wild Love with girl group GRL, which goes for guitar-driven folk music with a hook that unfortunately doesn't fit at all with the fuzzy bass line supporting Pitbull's verse, but you know what? I really like the melody, mostly because it's openly lifted from Kesha's song Last Goodbye from 2012, which Dr. Luke also co-wrote. Charming. But where this album really does stumble instrumentally is when, hilariously, it tries to go for more modern hip hop trends and neglects the melody. Anlike with Sean Paul goes to this heavy bass with stuttering percussion, and yet it's nowhere near as fun because there's barely any melody supporting the track. And Drive You Crazy has these reverb saturated 808s that quite literally drowns out any of the melody. Probably the worst instrumental on this album is This Is Not a Drill with BB Rexa, mostly thanks to the glugging reverb drowned 
synths, the heavy drum and bass, and even hi-hats on the close of this album gets anything to trap music, and it just flat out doesn't work because it's too cold and dreary to match with Pitbull's more upbeat flow and style delivery. On that note, let's talk about Pitbull himself, probably the best part of this album. Now, you don't need to tell me that he's not a great rapper by any stretch of the mind. He repeats his punchlines and his catchphrases to the point of meaninglessness. His references to sex are often just flat out ridiculous and often step over the line of sleazy, and he drops references to much better rappers a lot more often than he ever should. What gets perplexing is that for a rapper, he shows off a lot more dexterity with his flow and style that implies that if he were less interested in having a good time and just laid back partying, he could actually do a little bit more here. His imitation of Rum DMC's Walk This Way flow on Firewall, it was at least interesting, and he does switch up his flow enough to show some real versatility as a rapper. And his technical rhyming skills have actually improved here. And you know, you could make the argument that for all the empty calories that encompasses pretty much all of his content, it does seem like a bit of a waste of all that talent, especially when there doesn't really seem to be a lot to Pitbull. I mean, he basically has one of two modes, having fun at the club or picking up chicks for sex at the club. And outside of the odd grab bag of pop culture references, there isn't really a lot beyond that. Hell, the inclusion of his World Cup theme, We Are One with J-Lo and Claudio Late, is basically just another club party jam, which is probably why Shakira's football jam, Dare La La La, usurped it and outsold it on the charts. And you know, here's the odd thing. The guy's got a lot of personality and a ton of charisma, and his love of travel and self-awareness surrounding how much he doesn't fit into the modern rap scene, that does set him apart. The fact he's worked with Lil Jon in the past makes complete sense to me, because it's another case of personality making up for a lack of unique ideas. It knows that Pitbull does his absolute best to sell how much goddamn fun he's having, and how much he's working his ass off to make sure everyone else has a lot of fun too, especially the women. And it elevates songs that really aren't all that much beyond your standard party jam into something a little bit better. Time of Our Lives shows him reuniting with Neo for a song about getting a moment of real respite at the club from the daily grind, with the acknowledgement that everybody's going through rough times even him. And though he doesn't really describe those rough times, he can sell that weariness surprisingly well. If you wanted to go for more emotive songwriting, he could do it. Sexy Beaches is about no consequence beach hookups, played pretty well too, and Day Drinking is exactly about what it sounds like. And it's played with the same lethargic kickback vibe that Little Big Town oversold so hard in their most recent album. Hell, a Wild Wild Love, Pitbull tries to drop into his pickup mold with all five of GRL, and he doesn't know if it's even possible that he could handle all of them, but God damn it, he's gonna try. And what redeems him here is the way he sells it. There's ego, but it's not overdone or forced. He's looking to get laid, sure, but he's also looking for them both to have a lot of fun. And the fact that he's trying hard does redeem some of the sleaze for me. Maybe it's his lightweight production or some of his charisma, but it's hard not to root for the guy or at least respect his hustle, at least respect how hard he's working. Now that said, the overload of sexual double entendres with Jason Derulo and Juicy J on Drive You Crazy does get absolutely ridiculous and more than a little gross at points. The attempt at the baller attitude in all like was surprisingly varied if completely unconvincing. And I'd argue that this is not a drill played itself a little bit too seriously, at least for what Pitbull was going for on this album. Okay, in other words, okay, the question needs to become uh, why this album was made and what purpose it was because it's hard to say this album fails when the only thing it was trying to do was create a high energy dance vibe to produce a nondescript good time at the club. By that low standard, Pitbull actually does a pretty damn good job in that environment, and I could believably make the case that he's slowly becoming a better rapper from a very technical perspective. Do I wish that he showed more detail and told more of a personal story? Well, yeah, but I get what he does in order to maintain that global appeal. This album's goal is to be lightweight, disposable fun in the barest possible way. I'm not gonna lie and say it doesn't accomplish that. That said, when you do aim for that sort of standard, I can't exactly say you get a world-class project here either. And the real duds in this album leads me to give Globalization by Pitbull a light 6 out of 10. If you're a fan of looking for some decent, disposable pop rap, give this album a look. Honestly, take a look. It's not that bad. Otherwise, eh, it's Pitbull. By now, you should all know exactly what you're getting. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. What did you guys think of this album? Do you think it worked? Do you think he should have done more and should have gone for more introspective, deeper subject matter? Or are you just happy with Pitbull having a good time? Because for me, eh, it works. Um, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or any other albums that came out that you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.